My name is Tahir Abbas. I teach at the Institute of Security and Global Affairs at Leiden University in The Hague. I'm interested in issues of radicalization and Islamophobia, in particular the ways in which Islamist and far-right extremism feed off each other in local urban area contexts. Could you define what is Islamophobia exactly? Well, Islamophobia is a number of different things going on at the same time. At, at some level, it is structural and it's around educational, uh, labor market underachievement and uh, underemployment. At, the, at another level, it's cultural. So we think about values, we think about cultural differences somehow being alien to our values and our norms. And so it traverses a, a spectrum of different kinds of uh, othering, mm -hmm. different kinds of discrimination and discriminatory practices that, that bring together these uh, outcomes under one heading and that has advantages and disadvantages. Your thesis is that Islamophobia and radicalization, uh, they impact each other. How do they do that? So in, in effect, the, the idea of Islamophobia is that there is this anti-Muslim discrimination uh, and, and, and the practices associated with that. And these issues feed into the thinking of vulnerable young people who need a sense of belonging, a sense of nationhood, a sense of opportunity in a society that they feel has been denied to them because of who they are and what they represent. And so Islamophobia feeds into what people think of themselves. These are Muslims who are responding to it in their own ways and internalizing these uh, challenges. And then with the lack of any democratic accountability or opportunity, they are uh, turning too often to extremism and violence as a way to vent their frustrations. Mm -hmm. uh, Islamophobia is often labeled as a right-wing uh, thing. Um, would you agree? Well, I think it's uh, when we think about the right in politics, it's become much more normalized and institutionalized. We've seen political drifts to the right across Western Europe and North America over the last two decades. And it is true that while Islamophobia is this experience of anti-Muslim discrimination and othering, it's also a rhetoric that feeds into the activities of the far right, who then feel emboldened that their logic has a wider narrative to it. <laughs> and then if you think um, the next step, uh, are there any similarities between uh, right-wing uh, ideologies and Islamist ideologies? In most cases, we're talking about young men from urban areas who feel the pressures of globalization and localization on their sense of masculinity, on their sense of nationhood. And so they project this through ideological formations, whether it is Islamist in terms of the, the big caliphate that's going to solve all their problems, or in the case of the far right, getting their nation back or saving their nation, their white nation from invasion. And so we see these kinds of ideas becoming normalized among the far right, uh, often in response to the lack of opportunities that they have too. They are also young men facing the problems of deindustrialization and unemployment. And so they vent their frustrations through their ideological positions, almost as a mirror to the Islamists. OK, what to do with this situation? Well, it's, it's complicated because there are many factors that, that come into play uh, at, at the level of policy and how that's delivered and developed, but also in terms of how we understand it intellectually. Overall, we're looking at a, a problem of urban areas and problems of investment and, and young men having a, a sense of, of a role in society that has otherwise been denied to them or they are perceiving it in, in those terms. So we need to kind of harmonize society much more and introduce equality and the practices around cohesion much more openly than we have been. Do you have any positive or negative examples where this wishes circle is broken? Uh, broken it's wise, <laughs> well, we certainly see many examples of how this vicious cycle is created and reinforced. And it's, it's to do with the logic of the urban areas, but also the political landscape in which these ideas are, are fomented. In many examples of, uh, of uh, prevention and de-radicalization projects, it's quite the case that when you bring far right and Islamists together, they share the same problems, the same concerns, the same barriers to their personal growth. And once we begin to normalize and essentialize that, then I think it, it helps. Dialogue and discussion always helps. But we're living in very walled uh, situations, uh, economically, politically, culturally, and that's not helped by a wider political narrative. So you have to bring the people together. Always. Always bring the people together, because talking solves a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you.